Hello. Our reading today for our reflection is John chapter 6 verses 60 to 69. You have the words of eternal life. Recently I have been reading quite a bit about new monasticism. Not just that with capital letters, a form of fresh expression described by Ian Robsby and Mark Berry in their book The New Monastic but also the idea of the inner monastic, as discussed by Beverly Lanzetta in her book, The Monk Within, which is subtitled Embracing a Sacred Way of Life. Something I hope most of us want to do to the best of our abilities. She suggests that within each of us, there is an inner monastic, that part of us that yearns to totally give ourselves to God. I'm reminded of Saint Augustine, and the heart is restless until it finds its rest in you. Or Blaise Pascal's God-shaped hole, or vacuum in each of us. There is also the Ignatian idea that our deepest desires reflect God's deepest desires for us. That part of us, that deep down part of us, is the true self. Prior to our reading from John's Gospel, Jesus has been talking about himself being the bread of life and about drinking his blood and the possibility of eternal life by eating and drinking him. All very difficult and confusing things to understand. How does this relate to the disciples' deepest inner self? How does it relate to him being the Messiah, the fulfilment of promise, the fulfilment of their deepest desires? They were seeking that inner place and even thought they had found it in Jesus. But the fullness of it was difficult to understand and live up to. They would have to make a deliberate choice to do so and accept a form of discipline and structure, a pattern, a rule of life. Something of the inner monk. Over subsequent centuries, a distinctive monastic, distinctive monastic communities evolved. And in a way, the commitment required could be delegated to them. However, in more recent times, there is a growing desire, an awareness of something of that inner monk in each of us. Expressions of monasticism that seek to live that out in everyday life have emerged or grown. Some are quite old, the Franciscan Third Order, Benedictine Oblates. But there are also newer expressions and groups out there. The Northumbrian community, the Society of the Holy Trinity and its associated groups. A whole movement developing and blossoming in a whole range of different shapes, but all with a desire to live holy lives of commitment embedded into them. But I wonder, is there something about all of this for how we live out our lives in our churches? How much are we something the monastic community? How much should we be? I can see drawbacks to seeing ourselves that way. How do we balance the idea of being a group of people who have made a strong intentional commitment to a life of faith with some discipline and some structures with that of being a community that is open and welcoming and accessible to all? That's especially an issue for us in the Church of England, where everybody who lives within our parish boundaries is part of us. And we don't want to put up barriers. But on the other hand, there is something about having made a commitment to Jesus that should affect our lives and mean we live a distinctive and committed life under promises, under the promises we made at baptism and confirmation and affirm and repeat whenever we say the creed. Something that is actually deeply attractive. 
I wonder if we saw our day-to-day -day lives and our life within our church communities as having something of the monastic about them. I wonder how many would turn back. However, I am reminded that the commitment doesn't make us perfect. It doesn't require us to be perfect. We know that immediately after his words demonstrating such an immense faith and commitment, Jesus tried to dissuade Jesus from doing what he needed to do, following through on the implications of being who he was. And we know that Peter argued with Jesus at the Last Supper about having his feet washed. And we know that in the courtyard, while Jesus was being interrogated and tortured, Peter denied knowing him. And even after what was effectively the renewal of his vows at the breakfast barbecue on the shore of Lake Galilee, Peter didn't always get it right as he led the early church. It can be scary committing our lives to Jesus, especially if we do it in a public way. Baptism, confirmation, profession in some kind of new or older monastic order, the renewal of a covenant, like the Methodist renewal service. Whatever form it takes, we know that it doesn't make us perfect. It doesn't make our behaviour perfect. I was professed as a member of the Third Order of the Society of St Francis. I'm in my home church nearly 10 years ago, and it was a delight to have people from both my church family and my Franciscan family there. A member of the parish congregation remarked afterwards that the promises and vows that I had made were just those of being an ordinary Christian. And I think that is right, or at least should be. <laughs>